Hi, and welcome to the Haddonfield United Methodist Church Weekly Sermon Podcast. For more information about us or anything you hear in this episode, be sure to visit HaddonfieldUMC.org. We hope that this and every episode can help sustain you on the journey as together we seek to put our faith into action. Hi friends, welcome to the Sermon Podcast. My name is Reverend Chris Eckert. I serve as the senior pastor here. Uh, we are in the midst of the summer, the weekend of July 13th and 14th here in our Sermon Podcast, and I'm grateful that you found us. I encourage you to go over to our website, haddonfieldumc.org slash now. Check out some of the things happening in the life of our church. You can also find the sermon notes for this sermon and ways to support our church through giving. Well, as we come into our summer series, we are looking at the book of Ephesians found in the New Testament, and I'm going to be reading Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and insight. He has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Well, as we dive into this pretty meaty theological text, I want to look today at the subject of belonging, belonging, and particularly chosen belonging. Have you ever felt chosen for something? Of course, uh, in elementary school growing up, I dreaded uh, when we had to choose teams in gym class. It seems to be a very stereotypical thing. I I was never chosen first, and the worst thing in the world always seems to to be chosen last. How does it feel to be chosen? Well, Recently, I I got to spend uh, some time visiting friends in Germany, and a a great gift for my family and I, my girls and wife and mother-in-law were able to join me uh, for some of that time, and I visited uh, a friend who I've had for many, many years, and it was an amazing time. And I have come to learn that when people ask my daughters the best thing that they did in Europe and in their time with me is my friend's cat, Oscar. Now, I thought it would have been the cathedral that we saw or the London Eye or some of the other things we did both in the UK and in Germany. But it was really interesting to hear them tell other people how important Oscar was in their experience. Of course, if you would ask me what I enjoyed the most, I have all these things that we ate and places we went and experience we as we had. But what this reminds me is how important it is to have meaningful relationships. And that's always true with people, but it's also true with animals. And I want to talk about Oscar for a minute. I've known Oscar for a long time. I've been 
back and forth visiting my friend in, in Germany, and uh, they've had Oscar for 12 years. And the neat thing about Oscar is unlike a lot of cats who either run away or avoid strangers, is Oscar usually finds the person who is the most resistant to pets and insists that they befriend him. Well, in our group, that's me. I'm not really a cat person. I did grow up with cats, but it's they're not my thing. And day one, of course, anytime I go to visit my friend, Oscar finds his way to my lap. And we were told uh, by my friends that if you leave the door open, Oscar will visit you throughout the night. So for me, that was absolutely an invitation to keep my door closed. But my girls were begging us to let them leave their door open because what they wanted was a visit from Oscar in the middle of the night. And uh, they felt that he had chosen them as family. Now, I have to say, I now have a strange place in my heart for a German cat named Oscar who loved on us and made us feel welcome. It made me think of actually when I was a kid growing up, a friend of mine and I were walking in a rural area close to my parents' house, and we found a little kitten um, who was in, in the side of the road and kind of was cold and shivering and was covered in mud. And we picked up the kitten and we went to every house along that road to ask to see if anyone had lost a cat and no one did. And so my parents let me adopt that cat who very similarly to, to Oscar really made me feel special. My cat's name was Fluffy, I had him for many years and I had a very close and meaningful relationship with, with Fluffy. Well, I share these stories because I want you to think about times in which you have felt chosen, maybe unexpectedly or maybe reluctantly. Who are people or groups or teams or whatever it is that have made you feel really important? And sometimes we resist feelings of belonging. But belonging and borrowing are very, very different, right? If we own something compared to renting something, it's very, very different. I want you to think about your first car or your first house. When I was 17, I bought my first car. I believe it was $1,200. That would have been 1994, $1,200 Ford Tempo. Um, it had over 100,000 miles on it. And when I turned the lights on, the windshield wipers always came on. And I had tons of problems. But the thing about that car was it was mine. It wasn't my parents. It wasn't my brother's. It was my car. And it was very, very special. So when something belongs to us or that we feel we belong to someone else, it can really change the entire way that we show up or our attitude. I share these reflections because as we come into this text, this letter to the church in Ephesus, I want us to be thinking about what does it mean to be chosen for belonging. And so I just want to recap a couple of the words. It, it starts in this great blessing, right? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So let's give God all the thanks and praise for Jesus the Christ, who has become our center. And then verse 4 says, just as he chose us in Christ, that's God, chose us through Jesus Christ, before the foundation of the world, so before any creation happened, before the world was formed, before stars were put in the sky, we were chosen to be holy and blameless before him in love. Think about that. You didn't choose faith, but God chose you. You didn't choose this life. You didn't choose a life of discipleship of Jesus Christ. But this passage says that you, even before you were born and even before the earth was formed, you were chosen. Well, what does that mean and why is that significant? Well, the church of Ephesus is one of the first 
really significant churches among the Gentile population. After Jesus dies, is resurrected, and ascended, immediately the disciples become the church. If you read the book of Acts, it says that the disciples gathered and they began to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, that he's come to be the Messiah and God's salvation in the world. The church is formed. The church at this time are all Jews who are following the Jewish disciples of Jesus, also born Jewish, the Messiah of the people. And then there becomes this big question in the book of Acts. And that question is this, can non-Jewish people be saved by and believe in Jesus the Christ? And if they do, what do they have to do in order to be a part of that salvation? And there's a first council in the book of Acts, the Council of Jerusalem, and the agenda was one item. And that item was to discuss, do non-Jewish followers of Jesus the Messiah have to come in through the door of circumcision and also following the laws, the Mosaic laws of, of the Hebrew covenant. And ultimately, Peter says that he had a vision that God said, what I have made, let no one call unclean. And then Paul, the apostle, goes and begins to build churches among Gentiles, Greeks, Romans, people in Asia Minor and outside of that kingdom. And so here in this town of Ephesus, you have some Jewish Christians and you also have a large population of people who are outside. And there's this tension as to who was chosen first. Were the Jews indeed God's chosen people? And so therefore the Gentiles are the second class citizens in this group. And so the letter is writing particularly to the Gentile Christians saying, you were chosen before anyone was created. You're not an accident. You're not an add-on, but you are redeemed through Jesus the Christ. I want you to just stop for a moment and think about that. That God chose you before the foundation of the earth. God chose you not only to be a part of this experience of life, but also to be a part of what God is doing in the world through the good news of Jesus Christ. That message was true for the Gentiles, and that message is true for you, and that message is true for me. And just like I said, when you own something or when you belong to something, it changes how we live into it. Think of your first home if you've owned a home. It's a little different than if you're renting a home or staying with someone else. You feel more free, more committed. What does it mean to you that you have been chosen for a life of faith rather than you are choosing, do I believe this, do I not believe this? You have been chosen by God. But chosen for what? And into what becomes the question. I want to read further. It says, and just as he chose us in Christ, before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. We were not chosen to be holy and blameless. Remember that. We were chosen to be holy and blameless in love. God created us knowing our faults and our failures, our beauty and our brokenness. And we have not been called to be perfect. We have been called to receive and share the love of God. And that love is what redeems us. And that love is what makes us blameless and holy. I don't know about you. I am anything but blameless. There's a lot you can blame on me. A lot of mistakes, a lot of misgivings, a lot of things I could do, should do, shouldn't have done. But the life of faith is not to be blameless by what I do or what I don't do. God didn't choose me because I'm perfect. God chose me because God chose me. And there's a mystery in that. But what I am called to do 
is to spread and participate in the love of God. Think about what that would have meant for this church that was really kind of hanging together by a thread with tensions and people arguing over who had more of a right or who knew more, who was more entitled. Think about all the divisions and the dissension in our society today. We are not looking for people who are right, people who are better, or people who are blameless. But what this passage calls us to are people who can be perfected in God's love. And then it goes on and it says, He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. The purpose of that that statement is, I am adopted not because I'm smart. I'm not adopted because I am achieving of anything. I have not been adopted into God because I'm good enough. I have been adopted because of God's will. I don't understand it. I can't explain it. But what I can do is accept it and allow it to make a difference in my life. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope in Christ might live for the praise of his glory. So God gives us this sense of belonging, this blessing, and calls us to love, to share love, and to give God the credit. I I just want you to think right now about whatever might be happening in your life, whatever. I read news headlines all day long. It's something I really need to stop doing because I think my blood pressure goes up and down throughout the day. But just think about the chaos of the world, both politically about the, the weather changing and hurricanes and heat waves and, and everything. You know, we are called in God's unity as the God who chose us for this life to allow Jesus to give us the power of love that can create unity where humans don't have the ability to to create unity. You know, it makes zero sense for the church of Ephesus, for Jews and Gentiles to be together. They probably did not live together in the town. They probably did not do business together. They did not intermarry. They lived separately. But because of Jesus Christ, all of a sudden, as Paul would also write there, in Christ there is no Jew, no Greek, no slave, no free. Because of Jesus, we are to be blameless in love, and we are to give God our thanks and praise. And the passage gives us one more gift, reminds us of something, that we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Spirit of God. Because when our love fails, when our will fails, we know and understand that God's Spirit is at work in our lives, going ahead of us, going behind us, being present with us, giving us strength when we don't have strength, giving us compassion and forgiveness when we don't feel it. We are not alone. So my dear friend, as we go out in the world around us and as we continue our lives, keep at the center of your life that you have been chosen by God. You belong in the kingdom and the family of God, not because of what you have done or what you haven't done, And because of Jesus Christ, every shortcoming that you have has been forgiven. Every mistake that you have made has been redeemed. And all of your faults and failures have been made strong through Jesus Christ. The only thing that we have to do is to love God, love our neighbor as ourself, and to give God all the thanks and praise because it is through Jesus Christ that we are able to love our neighbor ourselves, our enemies, our strangers, the foreigners, those who who are on the margins, those who oppress, and those who are oppressed. We are called to reflect God's love to them. And when people see the light of God, let us give God the thanks and the praise. I'm grateful for you. Let us go forth to love and serve in this world. Amen. 
Thanks again for listening. For more information about us or anything you heard in this episode, be sure to visit HaddonfieldUMC.org. Through today's scripture and message, we pray that you find strength to go deeper into love of God and neighbor as we work together to be the church in a hurting world.